So I just want to review everything that we said and then end with a personal story. Let's remember. It's not only the sword, it's the smile. And that's what we have to keep our guard up. Baruch HaMokim Rav Schwab told us, why do we say HaMokim? Because sometimes we look at a child and we're thinking, oh my gosh, how did this happen? And just remember, HaMokim, God is always there. Never give up. Baruch, 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 every child. You never know who can be the great one. Ulam ochiv akoton yigdam imenu. That's why the Blue Jiva Rebbe gave the children the matzah, because he realized that Almana was right. Let's remember what Rabbi Isaac Bernstein told us. At the beginning of the Seder, we don't only talk about how we got out. How did we get in? We got in because the brothers dipped at Ksenes Pasim that Rashi and Vayeshev tells us is Karpas. So it makes no difference what you use for Karpas. But Karpas, that's the Ksenes Pasim. And we have to tell our children that we have to love each other. We have to love every Yid, regardless of their level of religiosity. We're all brothers and sisters. Let's remember the Yontif of Pesach is Rachmanis. That's why we have to give Mois Chitim. That's why we have to invite people early on. And that's why we have to make sure that the children have a place to go and they feel important, like Rabbi Shleim Zalman understood. Let's remember the Rebbe's Matzis, how the Skelena gave to everyone, but the Sarat Vision it says save three Matzis for the Rebbe because he understood that he probably gave away all the best Matzis to other people. How do we feel that we went out of Mitzrayim like Rav Schwab's arm? The cells are not the same, but the DNA is the same because we all recharged and rebirthed and regenerated over the generations. And finally, let's remember the matzahs. The matzahs are not just matzahs, they're faces. And that's why this Rav Shaya Unger felt that he needed a tikkun. But these are koyanim, levim, and yisraelim, and they come to the seder, that we should do a mitzvah with them. We the kalim of bracha, koyen, levi, Yisrael, our lives have to be sources of mitzvah. I just want to end with this story. Some of you know that I've had the schus to write a number of Magid books. And Mr. Sokol, my dear friend, he remembers we had Mr. Ozer, right, who taught us how to write, right? And, um, but really, I learned not from Mr. Ozer, but uh, I learned from my mother. But Mr. Ozer was also good. But anyway, so... Unfortunately, my father passed away when I was 21, and I was very, very close to my mother. She was a widow Nebuch for 40 long years. And when I started writing, the first thing that I wrote was the uh, book for Art Scroll on Brismila, and then it occurred to me to write the stories of the Maggot of Yerushalayim, and that's why the first of the books of stories was called The Maggot Speaks. The Maggot, of course, was Rav Shalom Shradron. Unfortunately, he had come to America. He stayed in our home for six months. He was like a brother to my father. And my father went to Eretz Yisrael to see him afterwards. And then when my father came back from Eretz Yisrael, he got sick and he passed away. But Rav Shalom Shradron felt so close to the family and he knew how awful it would be for a family to be without a, a father, a father figure at the Seder table. And so he came to us for Pesach, which is hard to believe. He left his family in Eretz Yisrael and he came to us for Pesach. And it was Saturday night that year was the first Seder. Now, Saturday night, when the Seder starts, it's always very late. Why? Because usually, if it's a midweek, you can make all the preparations, the haroises and the moror and anything else, the salt water. You can do it in the afternoon. But you're not allowed to do that on Shabbos. You can't prepare for choyl, even if it's yontif. So all the preparations begin after Shabbos. So the Seder starts very late. So now... The Seder started very late that night, and I knew that Rav Shalom Shradron, the Maggid of Yerushalayim, has only one Seder because he is an Israeli. And there were children at the table, grandchildren, and everybody is talking the Divrei Torah, and they want to sing their songs. And I knew that Rav Shalom Shradron had told me that he had never, since he was a young boy, never eaten the Afrikaiman after Chatzais, after halachically Chatzais. And I see that the Seder is schlepping. Because every kid has got to say the Manishtana and every kid has got to say all the Divrei Torah and show all the great Haggadahs that they made. So I said in English to my mother, not thinking that he would understand, I said, Ma, we got to rush. And I didn't want to say the word Afikaiman, but she understood. But Rav Shalom also understood. And he pokes me on the side 
And he says to me in Yiddish, Eilzachnit, don't rush. I didn't think he understood what I meant, but now that he understood, I said, Absholom, I told you, don't rush. Okay, I feel terrible because I see it's impossible. There's no way with the meal and all that we're going to finish before Chatzais. So fine, so I didn't say another word until the meal. And the meal, well, I caught my mother's eye and I motioned to her, right? Not saying anything. And somehow he saw it again. And again, he pokes me, I told you, don't rush. Okay, listen, he knows what he's doing. He realizes what I'm doing. And that night, for the first time in his life, he ate the Afikaiman after Chatzais. After the Seder, it's a very beautiful minute to say Shia Shirim. He and I are sitting at the table. Everybody's asleep already. We're saying Shia Shirim together. And I say to him in Yiddish, Shalom, I just want to ask your apology. You know, I feel terrible because you once told me that you never ate the Afikaiman after Chatzais. And now, because of my family, you ate the Afikaiman after Chatzais. I feel terrible. He says in Yiddish, Favos Vashteistanit. Why don't you understand? I said, well, understand what? He said to me, where are your priorities? I said, what priorities? He says, your mother's an almana. Your mother's a widow. What does she wait for? What is the most important night of the year for her? When her children and grandchildren come and they sit at the table and they're singing all these songs from the Haggadah and they're telling over the Divrei Torah, this is what she waits for. If I were to rush the Seder just so I should be able to eat the Afi Kaiman, I would be mitzayr. I would give pain to an almana. Giving pain to an almana is a derisa. Eating the afikamer before chatzay says the rabbanan. Where are your priorities? I'm telling you, he blew me away. That's what a godel is. That's what a great person is. You understand priorities. Of course, we have to try, obviously, to finish the seder, at least that part. So we should eat the afikamer before chatzay. But we have to be sensitive. That's what Yidin are all about. That's what Pesach is all about. It's not only to pass over, but it's to have Rachmanus. David should help that each one of us should be able, on this Yantif, to be able to make sure that the children understand and we understand what freedom is, what festivity is, and what family is all about. Because we're really one big family. Thanks for inviting me, and thank you for listening.